Uh, that was actually a, a great lead in into the uh, uh, next presentation, which I'll go ahead and, and do a similar a 10,000 uh, foot level perspective on tribal health care and in that same setting of, of rural perspective. Uh, we'll also touch on, on some of the uh, disparities and uh, some of the diversities we have that manifest themselves of health, uh, in health disparities as it pertains to uh, practice in a rural area. And just to set the stage, if we can go to the next slide, uh, the, the place that I currently work at is about 40 miles northeast of San Diego. And so we've talked in a variety of presentations this morning about the relative uh, urban versus the metro versus rural definitions that uh, people contend with when uh, evaluating and accessing healthcare. So as it pertains to some of the uh, local Indian reservations and some of the rural communities, uh, th these factors uh, are, are pertinent in terms of accessing their health care. What we want to focus on today is um, the, uh, the awareness of the American Indian presence nationally in terms of nations. Um, sometimes it's an um, uh, overlooked fact about the diversity across the United States. I also want to touch upon the magnitude of the, uh, the diversity in these populations and the factors affecting the quality of life uh, for these uh, individuals and the communities um, they live in. And then also reviewing uh, the magnitude of the, uh, the uh, work shortage that uh, uh, affects the delivery of care for these individuals. So moving on, we can um, uh, look at uh, focusing on the awareness of American Indian nations across the United States. So the next slide will show that there's an extreme amount of diversity across uh, the United States with over 570, nearly 600 different tribes represented uh, across uh, the, uh, the US. And so this poses a significant problem in providing care for uh, individuals uh, that is pertinent to how they even perceive care. Um, many of these individuals have uh, distinct languages, distinct customs, uh, uh, diverse cultural norms that need to be played into to provide that level of uh, care that, that they feel is, is appropriate and significant. And sometimes the, uh, the matters of distance, whether you're looking at the East versus West Coast is uh, something as, as uh, short in terms of distance between counties. So, and, and for example, the practice I uh, work at near San Diego County, there are nine, indiv nine individual reservations uh, and tribes that we serve, and just between a matter of five miles, uh, uh, diverse uh, and different customs will uh, be appropriate for those different populations. So as we move forward uh, to the next slide, we can also comment on the perspective that many of these, uh, over almost nearly 600 uh, distinct tribal entities uh, perceive uh, in terms of their health care and Indian Health Service and some of the, uh, the Tribal 648 or the uh, individual corporations that provide the care for these populations. And so um, remembering the, uh, the impact of uh, colonization, the impact of the treaties, and uh, there is uh, still a very, very persistent uh, and a truthful uh, perspective about healthcare delivery for uh, American Indian nations where the, the concept of a prepaid health plan um, that was uh, uh, exchanged for uh, lands is something that persists. And so when we look at a system that is uh, you know, struggling to maintain a, a level of care in this increasingly complex medical area uh, and uh, uh, providing that uh, service in a rural uh, component, uh, you can see there's a variety of, of uh, uh, pitfalls that are inherent to that, that situation. So moving on to the next slide, we can uh, uh, just give a brief uh, co uh, commentary and historical review of where, how do we get to this point moving today and delivering healthcare you know, for such a diverse group of people. So uh, moving quickly through, through some of these historical landmark points, we can see back in the, the mid 1800s that uh, in dealing with the, uh, the indigenous populations within the United States and North America, uh, that uh, there was initially a, uh, a department dealing with those individuals within the War Department. And then back in the, the mid 1800s, that was uh, transferred to the Bureau of Indian Affairs uh, in uh, response to and, and dealing with uh, the need for treaty obligations 
for that. And then in the early 1900s, we saw the delivery of professional care services uh, within public health services, recognizing that these populations were, um, were not going away. Uh, even though we may have relocated them, we may have uh, moved them to different parts away from either fertile lands or away from rivers, which were uh, prime areas, the, the populations still needed some level of care. And uh, this was dealt with in the public health service. Uh, recognizing that there needed to be some uh, obligatory uh, response back in the early 1900s, Congress began appropriations, which led inevitably to a landmark decision, including uh, which was uh, the Snyder Act, which provided for the, uh, uh, the appropriations for the benefit and care for American Indians uh, within the United States. Um, another landmark uh, decision that was in, that's in the next slide is the uh, Indian um, Healthcare Improvement Act, which uh, provided a assurances uh, for the delivery of high quality health care for uh, this population at risk. So it uh, also provided some guidance for the tribes to uh, actually take on a level of their health care and provided a way to uh, have tribes, which of course in ever changing uh, methods of health care and uh, the advancements really looked at helping them provide a, a higher level of care for, for them um, compared to previous. The next slide will actually show how that care is delivered. And so um, there are 12 distinct areas across the United States. And I've had the distinct pleasure of, of serving on a variety of com uh, committees, uh, specifically uh, the Committee on Native American Child Health and in association with the American Academy of Pediatrics. And, and in visiting each one of these 12 different regions, uh, although the geography and the, um, the tribal uh, entities may change, the similarities in terms of the burden of disease and the disparity, and as, as Dr. or Mr. Moore commented, the rural components and the problems inherent to delivering that care are, are very uniform across the United States, no matter which uh, 12 area, uh, 12 service areas that uh, you're, uh, you're seeing. Uh, moving on, we can see that uh, the delivery of that health care, it takes on a variety of forms. So there are uh, either a hospital-based setting or health centers, uh, uh, some federally qualified health centers, rural clinics uh, persist in these areas. Uh, sometimes incorporating uh, schools is a method uh, by which to involve uh, children uh, who are particularly high risk for uh, delivery of health care and some of the preventive health care that they need at earlier ages. And then also the uh, innovative use of uh, health stations. And that's something that's developed more and more so over the past uh, 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 probably 50 to um, 60 years is development of uh, corporations by individual tribes to take on a level of, health, of their health care and um, working in conjunction with Indian Health Service um, under Health and Human Services to uh, provide a more appropriate and um, in touch level of care for the, the, the communities they serve. As we mentioned uh, you know, in the very early part of the presentation, those 570 different tribes uh, often require an individualized approach uh, for a variety of reasons, which we'll touch upon uh, in the next couple of slides. So an example of uh, some of these uh, facilities, because many of us have preconceived ideas about uh, where people are receiving care. And uh, this is the facility that, that I currently work at. And so I often cite, uh, when people come to visit, um, I work in a 50,000 square foot facility uh, that is a multidisciplinary, uh, something akin to an ambulatory care center. So in this facility, which is only the front facade, uh, 50,000 square feet um, is about the size of a Costco. And so many people have a better understanding of, of the square footage and the level of complexity that these sites uh, have uh, um, an inherent within them. So within this site, uh, we can offer a dental, medical, variety of medical subspecialties, including optometry, acupuncture, uh, behavioral health components, as well as uh, catering to some of the more public health issues that uh, touch upon many of these different tribal entities. So uh, moving to the next slide, we can uh, appreciate that um, this is a, uh, a, a model that is replicated throughout, especially California. Uh, California has 42 different health clinics and uh, seven urban clinics. And so these different clinics take on uh, different facades and uh, again, really making it more a, 
uh, approach to a, a health village versus a health facility, which um, uh, draws uh, more people in and makes, again, uh, a, a uh, ownership of the, uh, the land and their health care uh, more appealing than it would be a uh, medical facility um, that is not really theirs. So the next slide will um, uh, touch upon and lead us into the amount of disparity that we uh, have to appreciate and have to deal with in these facilities. So moving on, um, this is the, the real take home slide. And I really like to incorporate uh, this in a variety uh, of presentations, whether they're community based or whether they're professionally based, uh, some of these major issues with uh, health equity and uh, strategies of, uh, addressing issues within the rural areas that, uh, that are served across the United States. And just to take a, a couple in terms of the, uh, the uh, uh, issues in, related, in re relations to the pandemic. So in terms of variable health literacy, so uh, you know, really selling the idea of um, what it means to have you know, an antibody test or whether, what it means to have a, a PCR test, what it need, what it, even RNA means in terms of you know, viral particles and really uh, spending some time and uh, uh, involving the public in that elevation of health literacy. And this is you know, within the, the issues of pandemic, much less uh, dosing uh, items like Tylenol. So the health literacy component is, is a major factor in looking at uh, the uh, health inequities that, that persist. Transportation, uh, Mr. Moore actually mentioned about the, the expanse of distances that many people have to travel uh, in uh, getting their health care. And transportation is a, is a uh, very, very difficult problem to address, uh, especially in those rural areas, as it, even as it pertains to infrastructure, uh, such as roads, uh, much less uh, vehicles to transport uh, individuals. And then lastly, looking at uh, real and perceived crime and safety influences. Uh, President Obama mentioned uh, back when the opioid epidemic uh, began that rural areas were going to be the ones most uh, affected by uh, the opioid uh, uh, issues, and and uh, to date, you know, we, we have come to realize that uh, issues with the Mexican cartels or uh, the heroin uh, highway, uh, and also issues dealing with uh, human trafficking, and really uh, have a strong uh, foothold within these rural areas. And so, uh, dealing with uh, these factors in, in um, these uh, these areas is, is a continuing problem. So you can see this slide really pertains to a variety of issues uh, within um, the, uh, the the tribal health care that we deliver out today. So wrapping up, uh, there's a couple more slides we want to focus on and just in terms of the, uh, um, the uh, health disparity that exists. And we can see that um, the American Indians uh, for the most part have a anywhere from five to 10 year lifespan less than the average population. And this is actually in a best case scenario on some of the more impoverished areas in the Dakotas or uh, in the areas that are distant from uh, other hospitals or, or major clinics that uh, these uh, uh, shortage and lifespan years uh, are significant. Um, average maybe even up to 20 years uh, in, in some populations. The next slide um, will uh, also lead us into uh, factors affecting the quality of life and specifically the barriers. So as we can see, there's a variety of barriers moving forward in this next slide that uh, touch on a variety of issues. So they can either be social, geographic, educational, um, uh, institutional, financial, and we in deta detailing out some of these uh, few uh, issues um, We've touched upon the geographic issues in some of the, the mountainous regions or some of the expanse of land that exists between areas of access for, uh, for healthcare. Uh, American Indians suffer uh, uh, large disparities in terms of educational uh, success that, uh, that others and uh, mainstream population uh, uh, may have. Institutionally, uh, Indian Health Service struggles uh, to uh, maintain a uh, prolonged and uh, extended funding cycle. Uh, the funding for Indian Health Service is year to year uh, versus having a protracted five year or 10 year uh, budget that uh, corporations and uh, any communities can count on in terms of uh, monies that are needed to fund individual programs. And uh, the, uh, the programs are inherently underfunded um, uh, by a significant amount, uh, 60, uh, by at least 40%. Um, in many in many situations, 
and then socially, you know, really selling the uh, the idea of preventive health care uh, among communities is uh, sometimes very, very difficult. Uh, populations really utilizing the ER mentalities, urgent or emergent care is a uh, as an ongoing and persistent trend. And then finally, financially, the next slide can can really kind of show the the amount of per capita uh, uh, that uh, the um, any health service uh, spends on its uh, participants. And so we can see that there's a variety of uh, other agencies. And this is a 2005 federal budget slide. And I like to leave it up because it really hasn't changed much <laughs> in the past 15 years. It, it's, it's persistently uh, uh, low and these levels uh, are uh, changed only by a factor of uh, maybe a thousand dollars in each category. But this, the level and the hierarchy is, is, is still uh, relatively the same with of course, the, the Medicare beneficiaries um, uh, uh, over and above, including the Bureau of Prisons, uh, above Indian Health Service and the delivery of health care. So wrapping up, um, what, what can we really kind of do with, the, uh, do with this uh, in terms of addressing these, some, some of these major issues? Um, the next slide will really kind of show the, the disparity in health care. Um, so we have you know, large vacancy rates uh, in a variety of professions, uh, whether it be pharmacy or nursing or physicians. And this last slide will really um, show the, the uh, magnitude of that. And so this is according to uh, the 2000, 2017 uh, AMC data for, um, high, for uh, medical school graduates. And of the 93,000 uh, individuals who graduated between 2012 and 2017, we can see that only 131 really identified as American Indian or Alaskan Native. And so uh, really sprinkling those 131 graduates across uh, those 507, 570 different tribal entities to provide the healthcare that is needed in a program that is inherently underfunded uh, really poses uh, the, uh, a major problem for uh, delivery of healthcare and improvement of healthcare in, in these populations. So and that uh, wraps it up uh, with the acknowledgement, acknowledgement slide that we have left. Um, thank you, my place of work for the past uh, nearly two decades, Indian Health Council, and of course, the National Academies for the opportunity to speak to you today and including some of our uh, funders uh, for our programs that we provide here on site. Thank you.